Hey, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you coming along. Let's see what we have. Yeah, opening of the envelope. Ah, the envelope, please. Gary from San Luis Obispo. Oh, San Luis Obispo, my old stomping grounds. PS Audio for, well, we started in Santa Maria, which is about 30 miles down south of San Luis Obispo. And later, we were on Tank Farm Road in San Luis Obispo for many years. I don't remember the address, but it was a cool building. I, I really enjoyed San Luis Obispo. It's a, actually a funny story. I got to tell you this funny story real quick. When I got out of the Army, I was in Germany in the Army, and I was a disc jockey for AFN. When I got out of the, the service, I decided to go back to our old stomping grounds, which was uh, in Anaheim. And when I had gotten there, when I first moved to Anaheim as a kid, there were orange groves and the sweet smell of orange blossoms in the summer and Disneyland. It was a great place. When I came back, I couldn't live there. It was a concrete asphalt jungle. And no offense if you live in Anaheim, and because maybe that's where you like to be. But for me, I just, I can't live in, in a place that is just strip malls and, and couldn't do it. It wasn't the same place as when I started. So Terry and I decided we're going to start moving north because there's greener pastures in Northern California. And I sent out audition tapes and I got two replies, one from Santa Maria and the other from San Luis Obispo. Terry, who always likes to shop around, make the right decision, bless her heart, because it's the right thing to do. And me, the impetuous kind, like, I just want a job, so I'm taking the first thing I get. Well, as we drive up the coast of 101, the first town we come to is Santa Maria. And I got hired immediately. Terry said, let's tell him, tell him you come back to him tomorrow. Let's go see this San Luis Obispo place. And I, no, 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 I'm taking it, because, you know. So... <laughs> Anyway, Santa Maria is a fine place, but San Luis Obispo just blows it away. And I wish I had listened to my wife. I guess I say that a lot because I'm still learning after all these years. Okay, sorry. So Gary from San Luis Obispo, with all the talk about room dimensions and shape, please discuss the distance between the speakers and mono versus stereo. The distance between the speakers. Well, okay. First off, that's, that's a fairly easy one. The distance between the speakers is something that you have to kind of learn how to do. Now, what I like to do is, is when I set up a pair of speakers, I start with a nice equilateral triangle. And I try and put my seat a third of the way into the room from the wall behind me. The speakers a third of the way into the room from the front wall the wall behind the speakers, right? So if, if you set that up, now then you want to draw a triangle from your seating position to the speakers. And that, if you have an equilateral triangle, kind of determines where those speakers are going to be in terms of distance from left to right, which I assume is what you're asking. Then you start playing, and that's where the tuning comes in. So if you move the speakers closer together, you'll have better mid-bass coupling. If you move them farther apart, you'll have worse mid-bass coupling. And by mid-bass coupling, I'm referring to the lower part of the, the chest, that, that chesty part of the voice, or a, a cello, uh, the, the bottom end, the, 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 what I call mid-bass, which is the area in frequency up, say, 600, 500, 600 hertz, and, and below up down to maybe 200 hertz, that sort of narrow band where we call mid-bass, that is accentuated or, re or reduced the closer the speakers get. So as they get closer, the coupling gets better between the drivers, and you increase it. So if it's sounding kind of tubby, one of the things you can do is pull them apart a little bit more, and that'll reduce that mid-bass hump that you hear. And also, of course, imaging. What you're trying to do in imaging is to divorce the sound from the speakers, make sure that the image comes from behind the loudspeakers, and that is a function of pulling them away from the rear wall, having some kind of appropriate diffusion 
if you can, behind the speakers on the rear wall. It could be a bookcase, any number of, of ways of doing that. And the other areas of imaging are toe-in. So I always start with the speakers flat and face-on, and then I start towing them in to get the center image correct, but not so pinpoint focused that I lose the outer edges of the sound stage and proper height and depth. As far as mono is concerned, I'm not sure what that question, I, I listen in stereo. I gave up mono a long time ago. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of mono. I know there's a whole cult of people that are, but I'm not. Um, and there seems to be a second one buried in here, but yeah, we'll get that next time. Okay, great question, and thanks for watching.